Hi, it's Lauren. Welcome back to my craft room. Thanks for joining me today. I was gifted a really amazing box from the Crafters Workshop or TCW. Um, you can find them at tcwstencils.com and they are also TCWs on Instagram and the Crafters Workshop on Facebook. And they sent me those adorable stamp sets and what seemed like an infinite amount of stencils. I couldn't believe how many amazing and different designs I was sent. Um, again, this was a gifted box and I just am so excited to have expanded my stencil collection so much with this gift and so many different styles and um, I'm just really, like I said, really excited to have a lot of different um, options now in my stencils. They also sent me some of these foil transfer sheets, which work with their own. Oh, there's two more stencils. I missed them. <laughs> that work with some of their paste. They gave me a palette knife. And then so many colors of stencil butters. And if you have seen my videos, you know that I like me some stencil paste. So I have an amazing collection of colors now of stencil butters. And I will say they are incredibly smooth. I've already used a few colors in some of my projects. Like for Pretty Pink Posh, I had those adorable little cherry note cards, if you saw over on my Instagram. And I used one of the red and green colors. These two actually right here, Barn Door and I want to say Terra Verte, if I'm saying that correctly. And then I used this champagne color with a sassy club reels also over on instagram so make sure you're following me over there if you aren't already and they also gave me some tacky when dry paste and i'm going to use that first because it needs the longest time to dry this is how i open almost all of my products i just cut off the little top part of my plastic uh, bags and i pull out my stencil this is a really cool kind of metallic or metal looking stencil it's called diamond plate and I this is how I'm going to do all of my stenciling I'm not going to walk you through this process every time because otherwise this video would have been like two hours long so I'm just using some mint tape to keep my stencil attached to a six by six piece of watercolor cardstock and I'm grabbing the Tacky Wind Dry paste and my palette knife. And as you can see on the back of the foil, this is what you use to attach some foil to your cardstock. So um, it needs plenty of time to dry. So I'm going to do this one first. And I am just wiping on this paste with my palette knife, I'm making sure to really get good coverage and a nice even coverage. I'm not pressing really hard because I don't want any of my paste to get wiped out of the stencil design but I am making sure to really get it nice and full the reason why I'm doing a bunch of six by six and three by six as you'll see in a little bit pieces of paper is so that way I can use them for backgrounds for anything for cards for scrapbooking and memory keeping I actually am going to use a lot of these to have backings for some of my lunch notes for Abigail for the month that I am behind on finishing because I colored them all last weekend at the Kindred Crop or Kindred Stamps retreat that I went to. So um, I'm behind on some lunch notes for Abigail. So I'm going to use some of these backgrounds that I'm making today to help make them nice and easy. I love a good stencil reveal. So let's take a look at how this diamond plate turned out. It looks so cool. There's only one little weird spot, but that's a user error, not a stencil or paste error. Here is a buffalo plaid that I'm going to use a green foil on later. It's so pretty. I also picked another really fun stencil, and this time I'm using the light and fluff, fluffy modeling paste, which is a great way to add texture to your card. And I'm actually going to show you how I use this later on with some mica distress spray stains. So I wanted to get those done and set aside to dry since there's more that I want to do to those three stenciled um, designs and the uh, paste that I'm using, the mixed media paste. 
Next, I'm grabbing this mermaid tail and I'm grabbing a denim turquoise and eggplant from the stencil butters. And I'm just applying a nice big old, I don't want to say chunk, that's not chunk, but a big scoop. There we go. A scoop of stencil butter in those three colors on my stencil. And I'm going to grab actually my really wide um, scraper that I have from scrapbook.com just to help me spread this a little faster since I have three different colors. And I'm trying not to overly mix it, but I do want my colors to kind of blend together in where the blue fades into the turquoise and turquoise into eggplant. So I'm kind of shifting my scraper a little bit each time. I don't mind that I've, you know, gotten color in other spots basically on my uh, background here and this is probably one of my favorite stencil reveals because I absolutely love cool colors and I just think this is so pretty I had one little weird spot but again user error not stencil error and it turned out so pretty and the nice thing about having all this excess stencil butter on my little scraper here I'm just gonna wipe it onto a scrap piece of watercolor cardstock and I'll use it maybe for die cut I think having a butterfly die cut out of those colors would be so pretty. So I'm just going to save those for later. Here is another stencil with these beautiful leaves. I believe this is the banana leaf stencil and I'm using the fern color, uh, which is this really pretty kind of yellow green. And this is just one color. So I just use my palette knife to completely spread and cover the stencil and this six by six inch piece of, again, everything here is watercolor cardstock. I'm just using some really cheap baby wipes to help me with cleanup today. So that way, like I said, my video would have been so long, but also creating all of these backgrounds, oh, this is just so pretty, would have taken forever. So forgive me for using baby wipes, but um, just wanted to make sure I was cleaning up everything as I went, because there's just so many stencil butters that I wanted to try. Now I have a nine by 12 watercolor cardstock pad. So every time I cut two six inch by six inch squares, it left me with two three by six rectangle pieces that I could just easily make into a square and create another background. So for this one, I just wanted to show you how I put two of those pieces together so they still fit perfectly behind the six by six stencil. And then I'll just use these as little strips on a card or small circle cutouts, um, whatever I can fit on a smaller piece. And I just love how beautiful that kind of polka dotted background looked. I've been keeping all of my stencils next to me in a tray with warm and soapy water and I was just showing how gross the water was getting so I did take a break and clean off my stencils and then replace that soapy water with clean soapy water. It's a great way to make sure you don't have a bunch of stuff stuck to your stencils while you are making backgrounds, especially if you're trying to do a bunch like I am. Your stencils will soak in that water and they will be so much easier to clean later on. Here's another design that I think is beautiful. I'm actually going to use this one on a final sample card, but let's just show two more. I have this lovely chocolate color that I did with these stacked rocks that I think looks so cool. I <laughs> kind of wish I would have done this on maybe a darker brown color or maybe like a graham cracker color. <laughs> maybe it looked like s'mores. How fun would that be? And here is platinum on these really pretty leaf design. I just think it's so beautiful. I will have everything linked down below that I used today, um, as well as links to the crafters workshop, um, their stamps, their stencils, and all of their uh, like mixed media type products. So now that my tacky when dry, papers are and designs are now actually dry. They are tacky. I tried to touch it and it's not wet anymore like a stencil paste. It is actually dry. It's just kind of sticky. And I grabbed one of these black tie sheets of foil 
and you could just use your hand to smooth it down. You could use a clean scraper to smooth it down, but I'm actually going to run it through my die cut machine just like I would if I was cutting a thin die. So I'm trying to open up my Spellbinders Platinum here without completely shaking my desk. And I'm gonna run it through like I would again if I had a die, but I just don't have a die this time. Now I added a shim because I wasn't sure if I needed the shim, but it was actually a little tough to go through. So I removed the shim and I'm just putting it through my die cut machine, which will add pressure to the foil and the cardstock so when you pull it off it will have hopefully a very nice clean design so here is that diamond plate with the black tie foil I think it looks so cool and I can save this piece to use the negative space on a future project I'm going to do the exact same thing with my buffalo plaid using the terra verte I hope I'm saying that right color I just think this green is so beautiful it has more of a blue tone than a yellow tone to it so again just going to repeat the exact same thing layer the foil onto the sticky side so foil side up um, then and sticky side up and you will get such a pretty design I love this buffalo plaid with all of that shine and finally here is the modeling paste it's all nice and dry I'm going to grab my splatter box and like I said I have some of the Halloween distress mica sprays I don't know what led me to grab these colors but I thought they would just make a really cool kind of spooky feel with this stencil so I may have to put some you know mystery characters or something with you know Halloween inspired with these colors I like I said I've been brainstorming uh, Abigail's lunch notes and I did color in some mystery pals without saying too much of what it is uh, and I think they would look really cool on this background. I just grabbed a paper towel to pick up some of the kind of liquid just sitting on top of the modeling paste and the watercolor paper just so it dries a little faster and I can show you the design without it being crazy wet and dripping everywhere but you can just let it dry as is you don't have to tap it off it will just take a little longer so here is a fun background and you can see that that modeling paste added texture and it will create a really pretty design when you spray over it or any other type of mixed media so this is one half of that hexagon design that I did the tulip hexagon and I created a card with it I added it as a strip and I stamped these beautiful butterflies from the crafters workshop and I also embossed that sentiment to go on there so let's just take a quick look I'm going to run through all of the designs so those are my two tacky when dry um, backgrounds with the foil here is my modeling paste and a bunch of different stenciled backgrounds they're so pretty and like I said I'm really excited to have all of these in my stash now so I can create some backgrounds really easy and I will definitely be using them for some lunch notes so make sure to head over to my blog um, if you want to see how those turned out and just one more really big thank you to the Crafters Workshop for this amazing package. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll click like, and if you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe and come back. As always, you can find everything I use down below in the description box. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye.